good day I've just grabbed my phone because I've got to the shed to find that two of my tools are here these hang on the door on the inside of the door there's the um, the sort of strap that goes around my my wrist from one of the tools there and my door is open very odd I think when I left the other day I might have just done that rather than throwing the bolt and of course we've had really windy weather and I think maybe because you can't see it from here let's go inside because you see how the the air can get in there and uh, a bit less so over here but I mean air can get in and I've just got a feeling that it pushed the door open so I need to pick up those tools and a reminder myself to um, or a reminder to myself to make sure that I bolt the door when I leave I don't think anything anyone has left anything no no one's left anything in here hey ho <laughs> never mind <laughs> never mind I wasn't going to come down today um, but I'm glad now that I did oh these have been left Ooh, what are they I think I know who they're from so I'll I'll, uh, I'll ask her as you can see I haven't pricked out any of these brassicas yet I hope to get on and do that tomorrow Brussels at the front dazzling blue kale here and then the remainder of the hybrids at the back and our lettuce these have bitten the dust yeah those have bitten the dust the ones at the front are growing but a bit oddly and the gazanias at the back I think they're okay our chard oh sorry about that I just hit something our chard is is germinating fine and I um, I think at the weekend I'm going to actually transfer these into the grow house over there nothing with the gazanias yet that I can see all this is some germination there but is that actually a gazania I don't know no these are scabious sorry I don't know what scabious look like and uh, oh there's another one there look oh sorry I'm not even showing you yeah I don't know what they look like um butternut squash I've just delved down into this one and this one has germinated as well so it looks as though we're going to have 10 butternut squash which is much better than we had a few years ago where we just couldn't grow any but then our, our tomatoes which are here how many have we got there four seven eleven thirteen fifteen sixteen I think we're going to need to sow some more seed um, yeah I think I'll be doing that let's have a quick look in the poly the pricked out brassicas are fine this is the hybrid the other three I'll prick out of the hybrids will go in here really mixed um, germination of these beetroot modules you can see some are getting away and some have got no germination in them whatsoever there's two varieties Dicciodia at the front and golden goldana or golden at the back but yeah really odd germination and then over here now i can't see any germination in the cucumbers which are this side but i can I'm not sure if you can see in there a bit of green and over here 
there's a bit of green those are the courgettes so the courgettes seem to be oh what about that one there that seems to be a bit of heave going on compost heave going on so yeah the courgettes have begun germination and and hopefully the the cucumbers won't be far behind but the weather we've got is uh, back to sort of cooler and at night cold weather for us at this time of year I mean last night it dropped down to about four degrees and that is I mean it's um, you know it's by no means unheard of but when we had been having temperatures of 20 21 22 degrees during the day for a few days it seems a bit disappointing to get a nighttime temperature of four degrees which of course is not going to help with the growing of many things brassicas will be fine with that but tomatoes and you know courgettes and cucumbers they'll be a bit uh, stunted by that cold I thought I would be streaming at some point this week but um, certainly not not at the moment and I don't think at the weekend either so it's Wednesday late afternoon it's about six o'clock now I did get down here to do a bit of watering on Monday and I really hoped to get down here yesterday it didn't happen and I had to get down here after a, a day at my desk today just to check on watering again nothing needs watering <laughs> you know the the thing with um, peat free compost is it certainly holds that that moisture and quite a few of you have been commenting on the challenges that you're having with germination and with growing in peat free compost and um, you know certainly the the comments that came back last week about mixing different medium into into the compost mix I think is a good idea and I mean someone did say to me you know I don't see why you don't buy this seed compost you do so much seed sowing why don't you buy this seed compost and I looked at the seed compost that they had suggested which which was made of wool and and something else I can't quite remember um, and it was like 32 pounds for for five liters um, and you know I mean I don't know what what these module trays hold um, but I would have thought let's say one I would have thought that two one module tray is like two and a half liters so I don't know I don't know it's I, many of you have commented and you've you've you know given me suggestions of what to do and I haven't really had the time since for her sake opened and since we've we're now having work done on the house on the outside of the house I haven't had that headspace to really sit down and have a think um, fortunately as I go to bed at night I have ensured that I've read even if it's just a chapter or a couple of chapters so I've I've generally had quite, quite a good night's sleep but um, yeah I, I certainly need that to wind down at the end of the day to get a good night's sleep I'm rambling now aren't I I'm rambling I really am I really am but yeah we've had storm Kathleen come over and another storm I think has come into uh, the southwest I mean it's been blustery here there's there's sort of no damage if I had bolted my my door uh, those those tools wouldn't be lying on the ground but the you know the disappointing thing for me and I think for many of us um, is just the fact that you want to get on and do things and the weather's just not playing ball at the moment for us to get on and do them I really really did hope like a week ago that that warmer weather that was coming in it was going to stay and we were going to really head off into the 
the sort of big time growing seasons of, of April and May and lots of seed sowing and pricking things out and, and potting them on and all of that and planting them out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's wet. I need to do more weeding and I'll get on and do that. So I, I, I will do that hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully I will get some time away from my desk so that I can get down here. But I am finding at the moment my time is really compacted. Um, oh, poor me, poor me. <laughs> Um, I did have a, a chat with Vivi yesterday uh, and we were talking uh, she was saying you know she she was watching some of my videos and thinking oh yeah you know I would be doing that I you know and it was it feels quite odd for her to be um, you know not doing some of the things or many of the things that I am doing well none of the things that I am doing at the allotment because of course she's she's getting uh, ready to leave her garden so we were chatting about that and I said yeah but you know what Vivi <laughs> you're not going to be saying as I think I am going to be saying oh it's another challenging year this year and I just feel I've, I'm sort of on that cusp at the moment of feeling that there are some things that are going to be challenging you know I am mulling going to the garden centre and getting some lettuce seedlings because I'd like to get lettuce seedlings in here in the poly tunnel those that are coming on in the greenhouse you know they're growing but they're growing really slowly they they really are um, and I just got a feeling that I'm I might pop to the garden center in within the next couple of days uh, if I have time that is with everything else that is going on but yeah, I've got a feeling I'm going to be saying, mmm, bit of a challenging time. I mean, I, I had expected more germination from those uh, tomatoes, but of course we've had that cold weather. You know, we've had it cold at nights and tomatoes don't like it being cold at nights. Um, hopefully those that are coming up <laughs> will be strong. So um, we'll see how that goes, but I think I'll be doing a bit more sowing of, of tomato seeds. Um, yeah, yeah, but then, you know, butternut squash sown 10 seeds and, and 10 seeds are coming through. So, you know, yeah, there we are. I have, of course, checked the potatoes, the Charlotte potatoes, and I can't see any leaf growth breaking ground there yet. So maybe later this week, maybe later this week. Right, I can see a really big cloud coming in, so I think it's time to say goodbye and get home before that rain hits us. I will see you soon, in a day or so, I think, and um, I think I'll just be, I don't know what I'll be doing, but those brassicas need to be pricked out that are in the greenhouse, so maybe I'll be getting on and doing that no point in doing more tomato seed sowing at the moment because the nighttime temperatures remain sort of cool so um yeah maybe in a uh, maybe next week <laughs> let's see what the weather next week brings oh there's three ducks there's three quacky ducks flying around oh dear things things like that just excite me it's quite ludicrous Right, I am going to go. I go to stop waffling and I will see you soon. I will see you again very soon. Hope you are getting on and doing things, whatever. The oh, there's another th four ducks. There's four ducks. All of those three ducks being joined by one duck. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. See you soon. Bye. good day pretty breezy but pretty sunny as well I didn't think I was going to be streaming but the last few days have been an awful lot drier that wind has been quite a drying wind so I've been able to get on and stream 
Uh, I haven't raked yet. I'll have to do that tomorrow. Uh, these end beds, I need to think about what I'm going to do in them this year. Um, I think these two will be flowers. That one over there, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm in a tidying mood and also in a pricking out mood. There's my table with my flask of tea and the brassicas that I'm going to be pricking out today, which I've been saying I'm going to be doing for ages. And I've also reclaimed this pathway here or significantly cut it back, let's say at least. Um, this had been lost over the last 18 months because I hadn't kept on top of it. And because it was really quite long grass, like the flower border bed is at the moment, I got shears and cut everything back and then I have strimmed it. So I did that because I wanted to make sure there was no wildlife that would be harmed with the strimmer in there. Oh, look at these little tulip beauties. There's iris coming up here. With the strimmer again, uh, with the strimmer again, I've been watching out for uh, ladybirds because there's quite a lot about again now. But yeah, I'm going to get these brassicas pricked out and potted up into modules. So at the end here, the remaining three hybrid that have been pricked out and uh, potted into these modules. Dazzling blue kale here, and these are mainly Brussels sprouts. I think there's 12 Brussels sprouts here, and then three dazzling blue kale at the front. And then um, these are the rose cuttings that remain that we took from the little roses that we had on our windowsill last year when we were looking at selling the house. A doorstep find. The other day I found these on somebody's doorstep being given away in our street so I thought I would take them and just leave them there to see if I could use them at all. I think I most probably could so um, yeah I'll ponder that. My strimmer there I need to clean the head which I'll do shortly and then you saw me carrying in this other street find which is a square compost bin i've been thinking about my composting for a while now and i think this might help me with where things can go and where things can fit the th the reason i like square things rather than round things is I always feel as though I can get more square things in than round things, um, certainly volume wise, if not unit wise, but um, hey ho. And then hopefully if the weather keeps up tomorrow, I'll be down sorting these two beds, getting them ready. That one over there, mainly weeding and then taking out the two buddleia, dark buddleia from this one here that have started growing. So I will see you very very soon. Well I'll likely see you tomorrow. Bye! Good day. 
Today's the day I've chosen to do the switcheroo of gravel trays. So these gravel trays, the black ones, have no holes in them. And I have swapped out the green gravel trays that have holes in them for these black. So this will make watering easier as we go through the drier months of the year or the supposed drier months of the year. So basically they hold water where the green gravel trays with holes in don't. And of course, when we get to the end of our growing season here in the UK, I will swap these out again for the green gravel trays because it's never good to have, well, it's rarely good to have plants sitting in water. There are some that are particularly aquatic and they like the water, but most of what we grow in the UK in our growing season isn't like that. So like these strawberries, they wouldn't like to sit in water on a regular basis. So yes, now they have a chance to sit in water and soak up the water and any water that isn't soaked up by tomorrow I'll just tip out but I would have thought that most of this maybe there's half a centimetre of water in each of these gravel trays now I would have thought that all of that will be soaked up by the time I come down tomorrow let's have a look at the other bench exactly the same situation here though I haven't given these a water yet and we do have a bit more germination in our spring onions but not a huge amount so I think I will be doing some more spring onion sowing and some more parsley sowing because there's no parsley germinated whatsoever I still need to switch out these trays down here um, you might be able to see these are the oaks that we potted up last year and a few other things as well. Oh, there's a calendula there in the middle and it's got a flower on it. Oh, I don't have any calendula, I don't think. No. Yesterday I was mentioning about these uh, buddleia here. These were cuttings that I did last year and they've started growing. I can actually see a bit of black fly on there. Um, so we've got two so I'm going to take these out now and pop them on, or pop them up in fact, and then I'm going to do a bit of weeding of this bed because we want to use this bed in the coming months. And the same with our swede over there. We've harvested a few swede but some of them were quite woody. Um, we did those in modules you may remember and I know other people have had success doing them in modules. Um, for us it hasn't worked this year but I'm going to try it again sorry it didn't work last year I'm going to try it again this year anyway first off get these out it'll be interesting to see how much root is on these and therefore what pot size I'm going to put them into Just a tiny bit of root, look at that. Again, just a tiny bit of root, but root there is. So yeah, I'm gonna look at pots now. Nothing there and nothing on that one. in there I'm just making a little hole 
where that root is going to sit in and then fill up. I want it at the same depth it was. Firm it down. That'll do for that one. Again, a little hole in there, in with that root, so it's sitting in the hole, not sure if you can see that. I always like to use my fingers like this as sort of, sort of podgy forks. that way you really get rid of air pockets Right, two dark buddleia potted up from cuttings. There is on the right a bit of dead wood um, but I'm going to cut that off with some secateurs. I'll just show you here. I'll pull that back. This is dead wood here so I can cut it here but not cut these. Um, otherwise I'm just going to just going to leave them and and give them a water I noticed the pot on the right has got a few cracks in it um, I went hunting for pots and just couldn't find the ones I thought I had so um, these will have to do I've still got some weeding to do but I think I'm just going to carry on with that off camera relatively shortly. Whilst I'm on this side of the plot I just thought I'd let you know that cucumbers are beginning to germinate which is great and the courgettes there's quite a few more courgettes coming through as well so that's great, but I'm really, really, I mean, I'm delighted that the courgettes and the cucumbers have germinated. Delighted, delighted, delighted. Really, really, really delighted that the cucumbers are coming through. I did think I might have to do a re-sowing, but I can see four, four coming through, and I'm sure we'll see more next week. I'm feeling that this week is a little less of a discombobulated week than previous weeks. Um, I think it's partly down to having strimmed the grass and opened up that path next to the flower border bed or the grass border bed as it is at the moment. Much weeding to do to, to try and keep on top of things and still no potatoes through yet, either in the tubs or in the ground. But hopefully we'll see some movement on those next week. I have noticed that my fellow plot neighbour behind me here, um, his which I think have been planted in drills are 
beginning to come through in his uh, raised bed. So, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny. <laughs> you know, you... Oh, you know, sometimes you you feel as though you really nurture things and <laughs> they take ages to come through. Anyway, anyway, never mind, never mind. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to carry on doing a bit more weeding down here and I'll do a bit more weeding tomorrow, I think. But I'm going to leave it here for this week's A Week at the Plot. Um, whatever you're doing, however it is going in your garden, your growing space or your allotment, I hope you are finding headspace to enjoy what you are doing. Even if it's sort of taking time out. I read a wonderful thing. I, I, I think it was sort of Mark Twain, but I may be completely wrong. Um, a quote the other day that said, everybody should take 15 minutes out to sit in nature each day. And if you're really busy, you should take an hour. And I think that all of the companies that employ us and all of our clients that employ us, they should um, they should abide by that. Wouldn't it be fabulous if everyone said, you know what, we're going to keep your working day the same length as it is, but we're going to ensure that you have a full hour for lunch and that you can get out into nature for at least half an hour during the time that we're paying you each day. What a world that would be. That would be fabulous. Anyway, I'm going to go before I change the world too much. I will see you again next week for more A Week at the Plot. And I think we're going to be pricking out tomatoes at some point next week because it will be time certainly to take them out of the sea trays and uh, prick them out and pot them up into their own pots so that they can grow on ready to be planted out maybe the end of May. Right, any comments, any questions, please do leave them down below and I will see you very soon if you follow us on Planet Vegetaria and I'll see you in a week's time if you follow on YouTube. See you very soon. Bye and happy growing.